What up, what up, what's going on folks? It's YouTube's best kept secret, K Spade the Prospect. I'm back today with a brand new UNLV Running Rebels Rebuild video. Now, unfortunately, today's video is not going to be on the football field, and I know, I know you guys are so anxious to see the new look Rebels. Trust me, I am too. But it's the hard work you do right here, in between the seasons, behind the scenes, that make those games on the field easier. So it ain't that sexy to look at, but this stuff is crazy important, y'all. It's uber important. So let me do what I do. This is why I'm good. Why did I not win coach of the year? I just thought about it. I got robbed of coach of the year. Definitely should have been coach of the year. But this is what makes me coach of the year. And I'm going to go through the various stages. And then we're going to end this video right here, right at the start for the new season. In the last video, I showed you guys off-season recruiting. I went through and talked to a lot of kids. We brought a lot over. It was a few that got away from us that we should have gotten, including the two guys. Somebody came through and said, Spade, you must then offer them a scholarship. And I was kind of beating up on myself like, damn, how did I not offer them a scholarship? Then I was like, wait a minute, but they didn't sign with any school. So you trying to tell me that nobody offered them kids a scholarship? I think their parents was just forcing them to play football and they got of age and said, you know what? I don't want to play no more. I don't want to go to college. Anyway, the current stage of the offseason is called training results, and this is basically season to season progression. I like this because it varies from player to player. I'm not sure if it varies based off of the performance of the previous season or if it's just something internal, like somebody just got that motor. Uh, it's weird. Like one of my receivers, Makai Stevenson, he got two points faster. His, his speed actually moved up two points. His overall only moved like four points. Whereas one of my other receivers, Darren Woods Jr., he got six points better overall, but he didn't get any faster. I like this. And this is also super important, y'all, because what happens is we lose a lot of players to the draft. Okay, I lied. <laughs> we do not lose a lot of players to the draft. We lose a lot of players to graduation, and then you got a younger, less experienced player stepping in their role. So you need these players to be progressing and getting better every year, and I love the progression system over here. Quick overview, you can see I looked at the awareness. I looked at overall. I tend to look at speed and and uh, awareness. I even go through and look at tackle and hit power. I just want to know, like once the game is, is going, I don't really care that much, but in the back of my mind, I want to know if, if one of my receivers is super fast, if it's late in the game and I need to throw up some BS, I need to throw up that Hail Mary, I want to know who's probably got the speed. Or I want to know who got the best catch in traffic. Or I want to know who got the hit power, which I was shocked to see that the two hardest hitters on my defense play on the defensive line. We're going to work on that. Anyway, let me keep it moving. We advance to the next stage where we have to cut players. You have to get the roster size down to 70 people. Now, I'm funny about my scholarships. If I'm just giving scholarships to kids that's just sitting there and they never going to use them, I'll cut them too. So we only need to cut two, but let's see what happens. We got quite a few running backs over here. I looked at my running backs. I decided they was all safe. We only got one fullback. He's safe. I come to the receiver group, and we got a lot of people over here, a lot of young people. So I look at speed. I look at height. I look at this guy right here. Five foot five. Fam, come on, y'all. Five, five. He's five, five. He's only 180 pounds. He's slow, and his awareness was dumb low, so I definitely cut him. Now, you guys are probably looking at Lonnie Taylor and Kendall Keys, and you saying, Spade, they 85 speed, too. Yeah, they 6'3", 6'4", 200 pounds, big receivers. If you 5'5", five, five, you're shorter than everybody. You 85 speed, you slower than everybody. He was like 46 awareness, you dominant everybody. I don't even really know what you can help the team with. He got to go. I'm looking at my middle backers. I'm at the cut limit, but I had a 69 speed middle backer fam. You got to go. Who you going to tackle with 69 speed? Who you going to catch? Like, how can you patrol the middle of my field with speed that low? And I was on the cutting frenzy for a minute, man. I came and looked at Marlon Gore. I was about to cut him, but he is a true freshman. Two-star guy to Albany, New York. They say he's a hard hitter. I went and looked at his hit power. He's got like the second highest hit power amongst my cornerbacks. And he's still super young, so we can red shirt this guy. We can take some flashcards, you know what I'm saying? Get his awareness up, make him a little bit smarter. And one day, I believe he can be a productive member of my secondary, so he avoided the cut. Those other three guys didn't. The next stage is super important. This is where we create the prospects and then eventually go and build our uh, scouting board. Now, I like what I did last season as far as the questions. I'm going to make it a little bit tougher this year, but I'm going to give you guys a longer grace period. Last time, or this time, I actually made the video 
and the very next day I was ready to create these people. So a lot of people didn't get a chance to get back to me in time and even though I was gonna create 12, I only created like nine or 10 people. So this time what I wanna do is let it cook for a couple of days but I'm gonna make these questions tougher fam. I'm, hey, I'm telling you, it's gonna be tougher. So some of the names that you guys are gonna be seeing are some of the subs. I didn't get a chance to show you every single one in the video so there's a few of them that didn't make it in the video but trust me y'all in there. Everybody who I hit up, if you guys replied to me in time, uh, you got at it. I did a great job of trying to move these guys throughout the country. I didn't make them all live in Nevada. So I just wanted it to be fair. Some of y'all going to go to other schools. Hopefully we get a couple of y'all over here. You know, you could be rebels and play for the greatest coach who should have won coach of the year. Who do I talk to about that? I got snubbed. Anyway, shout out to the homie Jace. Jace tried his best to get in my Miami Hurricane series. He couldn't make it in. I knew he, I knew exactly what he wanted to be. He always wants to make this fullback. He wants the fullback to be the size of Refrigerator Perry, who I know did dabble in the backfield a little bit, but it just looks so weird seeing that fullback being that big. But Jace, finally, you made it, bro. You made it. Jace is in here. Shout out to James Lance. James said he wanted to be a safety, but I'm going to tell you what he said that kind of tickled me a little bit he said if i don't get recruited spade is cool i don't want to take the spotlight from junior and i laugh you cannot take the spotlight from my son he is the truth i'm get on my lonzo ball right quick junior has a little bit of ed reed a little bit of sean taylor and a little bit of ronnie lot you cannot take the spotlight from that but at the same time i said man this dude might be cold so i made him a free safety if we get him they might can control my secondary Showing up Jenkins is not one of my subs. Every year I have a character I create. I make him a little bit better. You see he was a 76 overall. Usually when I make my subs, I try to keep them in the three star range. They're usually a low 70s, 72, 73, something like that. I just don't want one of my subs to come in here and light the nation on fire. Show sure enough, when I made him, I wanted to make like this big country cornbread eating down south football slinging phenom. And I tried to make him on the Byron left with a Dante Cole pepper frame, like 6'6", 250, 260, and make him a pocket passer with a cannon for an arm. I'm talking tech mobile, throw from end zone to end zone, just, you know, some wild stuff. So, show enough is also out here. We're going to see if we get him. I made him be from Alabama, so it's a good chance he could end up with the evil dynasty known as the Crimson Tide. But I put him out there, we're going to see if we can get him. Right here, I'm building my board. I only got a thousand points to scout and you know this week right here the season hasn't started so you cannot actually start recruiting you can only scout these dudes and somebody came through last season and says Spade you need to get your head coach that scouting stuff you want to up that and I know he was right but I was stubborn I was so focused on recruiting that every time I got a coaching upgrade I put it on recruiting I put it on recruiting and it's biting me in the ass right here I can only scout about 10% of these players some players i can scout 15 percent i'm not really sure what makes it vary from one player to the next maybe position but at any rate i'm gonna run out of points before i can scout all of these guys which was gonna happen anyway and to be honest with you i think i got too many people on the board so after a week or two i'm gonna look and see who we who we got a chance with who we don't have a chance with we're gonna take some guys off we're gonna focus on the guys that we know we got a chance at like if after two weeks, if I'm 1,500 points back, fam, we might as well let him go. We'll catch up with the next person. The guys that I feel like we can get, we going hard at them this year. I think that's the game plan. We're going to see. So where are we? We're still doing the scouting. Scouting is important, not so much for the guys I created because I know what their ratings are, you know, in terms of different categories of attributes. But these other players, I got no idea. We just got this generic number, and we got to go through and see if it's, if it's fact or if it's fiction. Some of these guys are better than advertised, and some of these dudes are lying, fam. They straight up lying. So that's why scouting is important, but I will admit to you, these points come at a premium, and if I'm only getting 10% this week, that next week, I know me, I'm going to want to use those points for scouting, I mean for recruiting, and some of these players won't be scouted all the way out. Next stage, folks, red shirt and players. This is fun for me. Cause I would slap a red shirt on you in a New York second fam. Uh, like my boy right here, Brad, have a seat. Have a seat. You only got 61 awareness. You're not that smart right now, Brad. Not that smart. You're gonna sit down, we're gonna teach you the system. You're gonna get your chance to shine later on. My, my running back group looks really good. 
This fullback is a 48 overall. We're probably going to put a tight end over there. Don't even worry about it. Those, those bottom two wide receivers, I would love to redshirt those guys. They've already been redshirted. I'm not going to redshirt Makai Stevenson. He's the fastest receiver we got. Lonnie Taylor is a true freshman, though. He can have a seat. Lonnie, you'll get your chance to shine. Don't even worry about it. And I jumped over the offensive line because flat out, I didn't do a good job of recruiting offensive linemen. So I don't have anybody that I can sit. Like everybody there is probably going to have to play. I'm only like too deep at each one of my offensive linemen positions. So when I redshirted those guys, you see I did go back and look, but uh, they're not getting redshirted. Defensive tackles. Got a few of those. Wait, hold up. Look, now I got a freshman that's my best right end, but we're not sitting them down. I got a lot of defensive tackles, but the younger ones have already been redshirted. So I'm just going to have a ton of them. Left outside linebackers, I got a bunch of those. I didn't want to redshirt two of them. So, I mean, who knows? But we're going to go ahead and redshirt one of those. We're going to redshirt this guy, Mike Foster. Mike, you're going to play one day, fam. 82 speed, middle backer. That's the kind of stuff I like. It's just not your time right now. You got to have a seat. Got to have a seat. We come over here and look at the corners. Now, I showed you guys Marlon Gore almost got the axe. We're going to sit him. We're going to give him an opportunity to get a little bit better, a little bit smarter. And he's going to be the man one day. I want y'all to remember that name. Marlon Gore is going to be the man one day. Just not today. We look at the freeze. We look at the strongs. And we elect not to red shirt K Spade Jr. Is it nepotism or what? I don't know. Y'all let me know. At any rate, we are not going to red shirt Jr. And Coach Spade feeling himself. We want to start this year off with some tough games. We want to put the rest of the nation on notice. We think we ready. Now, already we start this season off with Arizona. We lost to that team last year. We played them again in the bowl game. And, and to be honest, we kicked their ass in the bowl game. So I know they're going to be angry. I know they're coming back this year to fight. And then we're going to follow that tough game up with two ranked games. Because that's how we're doing it this year. So anyway, folks, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The next video, you know what? Let's say Thursday. We're going to come back Thursday with gameplay. You guys be there. I'm out to the end, folks. Peace.